More utter, utter madness in the channel because the government is understood to be in the final stages of a rather expensive deal with the French over how we stop these small boats coming. The agreement could see British Border Force officials stationed in French control rooms. But all is not as it seems, because apparently all that this would mean is it allows them to observe operations and coordinate searches for boats, making the journey across the channel, not actually enact anything. It's expected this deal will cost us 80 million quid. Bob on. But... Can we put all our trust into the French? And will this deal of providing tens of millions in extra cash to stop last year's 54 million, on top of last year's 54 million quid, by the way, actually have any impact? Joining me now is the former immigration minister, Lord Timothy Kirko. Lord Timothy, thank you very much. I am, in case it wasn't immediately Hi. obvious, deeply sceptical that lobbing any more money over to the French will have any impact whatsoever. What's your view on this? Well, it's not the question of the money, really. It's a question of whether we can cooperate uh, with the French neighbours over what has undoubtedly become uh, a pretty serious situation. And uh, my view is that uh, we should seize the opportunity because um, the discussions that have taken place uh, at the uh, uh, summit on, on the environment between uh, President Macron and uh, Rishi Sunak uh, seem to me to be the most positive connections uh, that we've had with the French for a long time. So we, we should seize that opportunity, and uh, we really do need to do something about it. And, we, and the only way we can really successfully deal with this channel situation is in cooperation with the French, as far as I'm yes, concerned. Yes, but, but I'm concerned that this is just window dressing and that they were all rather smiley and happy clappy because they've got a lot in common, which is essentially, you know, they're kind of big money men with a history in banking and financial services, and so therefore they can have a good chat oh, about no. all of that. Is this actually practically going to work? Because my understanding is that some British Border Force officials will just be able to essentially watch a Frenchman watching a computer screen, watching some boats hurtling towards Britain. No, I don't accept that that's going to happen like that at all. I mean, I was when I was a European member of Parliament, uh, I was very much involved with working with Europol and the cooperation that took place then between our law enforcement agencies was really quite significant. In fact, Europol was actually run by a Brit. Um, but clearly things have changed. I mean, Brexit did change things. We no longer have the right to return people to a European country as we used to have. So we've got to deal with things on a bilateral basis. And here we are dealing with the French, talking to Macron. Um, and indeed, you said that there's nothing in common, those two. I think there's an awful lot in common. I mean, in terms of age, height, <laughs> you name yes, it. Yes, it was they quite literally a face-to-face -face -face well. meeting, wasn't it? It was quite literally a face-to-face -face meeting, yes. But if I was, and I want to make this very clear, if I was Macron and if I was, you know, a Calais yeah. resident, for example, 100%, I, and this is why I'm just not sure this thing is going to work, because if I was them... I would not be st standing in the way of these people wanting to leave my country. OK, so realistically, just in practical terms, uh, what, what, what incentive is oh, there for look, the French to keep them there? Every incentive, because uh, as far the French are already taking about four times as many people as we do in terms of uh, asylum seekers, um, a substantial amount. The reputation of France uh, is obviously affected. The reputation of the European Union is affected by this going on. It isn't helping in terms of our agreement that we have with Europe, which, as you know, um, supposed to be a, a trade and cooperation agreement that we signed up to on Brexit. Well, I haven't seen a lot of trade yet. You know, the ordinary trade's carrying on, but nothing new. Where's cooperation? Well, we need more cooperation, and here's an example of it. The French don't want these people to leave their shores any more than we want them to come really? to us. Uh, frankly, uh, between us, though, we do have more clout in dealing with countries like Albania, where people are leaving in large numbers for reasons which have more to do with the Albanian government than they have to do with uh, any particular causes that would qualify them for asylum in Britain. No, I, I've gone on record and said that I think we need to have more of a deterrent, i.e. a quicker deportation yeah. and processing system. We also need to cut the head off the snake, i.e. The, the, the people smugglers. But can I just ask, uh, where's your evidence that the French don't want them to leave their country any more than we want to have them here? It's pretty happy to wave them off, as far as I can tell. Well, they'd rather see them going back in the other direction, to Albania or wherever they've come. I was the immigration minister at a time when uh, we didn't have quite the same problems, but at the same time, I took a clear view on this. 
I wanted to return people who had no right to remain in Britain as quickly as possible. One of the big failures of governments over the last few years, frankly, has been our failure to deal with people who are in this country illegally. And I'm not talking specifically of asylum seekers. I'm talking about migrants coming here illegally who actually should be removed because they have no reason to be in this country. Our failure to remove them and send them back from where they came is, I think, one of the biggest problems that we actually have, rather than sending them off to some other country and asylum seekers to other countries. And you mentioned £80 million. Um, I'd like to see the figures on that. But it seems to me that if we can get our guys to cooperate with the French and work with them closely, and they will work closely with them. You say just observing. Actually, it's more than that. Um, they will work closely with them. If we can do that, then we can save an awful lot of money. And we're, we're presently considering paying to Rwanda or some other country to deal with these applications. That isn't very sensible. You talk about 80 million here. We're talking about hundreds of millions elsewhere. Uh, yes, it all costs money, but we've got to deal with it. And I think the best way to deal with it is to take up the opportunities when they arise. And this opportunity seems to me to be a very positive one. And you're very cynical. You're very skeptical about it. saying, so, you know, Yeah, of course you are. OK, you're entitled to that. And you can be as skeptical as you like. But uh, and, and the proof is in the pudding, as they say. I want to see if this works. I want to give it a chance um, mm. because, frankly, it's the first initiative we've been seeing, which is positive for a long time now. And if the French are going to uh, do what they say they will do, and mm. we are going to cooperate in that, and we can get the achievement of what we need, which is to cut out these channel crossings, then I, for one, would be very happy. I, I do wonder, just very quickly, sorry about this, just very, very quickly, whether or not right. we could come up with some kind of joint thing with the French as well, building on this which is some kind of joint deportation scheme to get them out of, in a sense, both of our countries. Because, as you said, rightly so, the French would like to see them going the other way. We certainly would like to see them going the other way. Whether or not Rwanda or Paraguay or Peru or no. wherever else is being mentioned is the answer, I don't know. But maybe that's proper cooperation. Could the British and the French come up with a joint deportation scheme? Yeah, well, you know, as I said before Brexit, we had Dublin. I drafted Dublin, the agreement, which was one where actually countries in Europe could return people to other safe countries in Europe. And there was no questions asked. Now, my, look, look, my view is this. You say whether we send them to Paraguay, Peru, God knows where. <laughs> my view is they should be going back from where they've come. Never mind sending them to some new country with new investment okay. having to be made. And the only way you can do that is working in joint, jointly with others. Now, okay. if we can work with the French on that, and the French are, are going to prove that they really care about this, then I think right. that would be an answer. So I'm keen on that happening. Right? All right, Lord Timothy Kirkhope there. Thank you very much, former Immigration Minister. What do you make of that, ladies and gentlemen? Interesting stuff. GB Views at gbnews.uk.